morning to the online congregation, and I welcome those of you who are new. Good morning to everyone who's here with us in person. Um, before we get started today, I have some praise reports that I wanted to share. The first one is from Sister Kimberly. I was checking on her dad. Now, remember, he's 81 years old, and he had gone up onto the roof because he was trying to, um, like, uh, secure it or proof it animal proof it for animals that try to come and get in and, and things like that and he fell off the roof and so he had a really bad injury he's been in the hospital he's been released from the hospital and back into the hospital so she said he is doing better able to breathe much better after they removed the fluid from his lung they had released him from the hospital and he was having all these breathing problems um, when he went back in he had fluid on his lungs that they had to remove or at least one one side and um, so after they got the fluid off, uh, he seemed to be breathing some better. But um, she said he was still, he was having breathing, uh, trouble breathing good from the start. And he thought it was on this uh, collar they had him wearing. But when they pulled that off, he's still having problems breathing. Um, Sister Kimberly had shared that he and his wife had gotten the vaccines and a lot of, there's a lot of fallout going on with all of that, as you guys know. And breathing problems and all of that is part of that, or can be. We don't know that it was because of that, but it could be, okay? So we need to keep them in prayer for that. His wife also, okay? Um, so, but she said when they removed the collar, he was still having some breathing problems. He's having swelling in his feet, and she says it's less in the morning, and then as the day progresses, it gets worse, okay? And that um, he was going to the ortho doctor to see how his broken bones were healing. So I do praise God that there is some improvement. There was at least a report of, you know, that he was doing some better. So let's keep him in prayer, you guys. But we do thank you, Lord Jesus, for the improvement and how far he has come already, okay? And I want to give a uh, update. Jessica, her mom, had the really bad four-wheeler accident where she broke her pelvic uh, bone, her pelvic area, like in, I think it was two places. She had broken ribs. She was bruised up. It was a bad, bad deal. Um, and she was in the hospital for days and days on end until really her family members got up there and kind of started pushing the issue. First, it was her blood sugar level had to stabilize, and we were praying about that. Then when that happened, they still weren't operating. And then it seemed like once the reinforcements came and started saying, you know, hey, what's going on here? Then, then they got on with the surgery, right? So Jessica said that her mom was, had been in rehab, and I think she was due out to get out this past week, so she should be out by now. And that they were able to have, they had a small birthday party there for her, and she said the nurses were kind and let them do that. And that... Um, she was, she's been walking with a walker. And so Jessica said that that right there in itself is amazing. And we, we thank the Lord Jesus for that because she said they had originally told her that she would be in a body cast for several months. There was no body cast. And she is already up and walking with a walker. And we praise God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give, give Jesus all the glory for that. For both of these updates and and thank you sister kimberly thank you sister jessica for updating us and letting us know and you guys out there that pray with us please be be praying over them keep them in prayer for their recovery their healing and for their salvation so okay we are on new age part 11 i'm still talking about meditation and we're going to be talking about simone today you guys have heard me uh, mention Simone several times throughout this teaching series so far. And some of you may not be familiar with who she is and who is this person that I keep mentioning, right? Um, today I'm going to be sharing some of her testimony. And that way you can get familiar with who she is, all right, and why I, I mention her. So this is Simone back when she was in the New Age and witchcraft. She was in it for 30 years. And here, here she is in traditional witch garb. God led her to Three Hearts Church for deliverance. 
and to grow and be discipled in his word. I praise God for her salvation, deliverance, and for sharing her testimony. We can learn from her testimony, and God gets all the glory. So I talked with her as I've been doing this teaching series. I was asking her, I said, what type of meditation did she do? Because I really didn't get uh, a lot of, you know, she didn't just speak about one thing. She, she talked about many things, okay? And so you kind of have to glean it out and kind of dig down to the roots of, well, what, what were you doing that led you into this or that or, or, you know, different things. So I asked her, and this is what she said. She said, I don't recall specific names. Remember how we talked about it? It just kind of builds one thing, leads to another, to another, to another, and it's eclectic, and many New Agers are doing like some of this, some of that, and it's kind of like a mixed bag of tricks, so to speak, because they're just, you know, what appeals to this person might not appeal to that person, and it's just anything goes, and it's just all kinds of stuff. So she said she didn't recall specific names. She said, I did quite a few different things. Empty your mind and let thoughts float through. If you catch one and focus on it, let it go. Past life regression, guided meditations, white ball of energy starting at the navel and focusing on it, moving in and around and guiding it places in the body. She also did chakra meditations using imagery and sounds. Tinctures, that's little symbols on a string. It makes a chime sound go with the sound. That was that's what that kind of meditation was. Creative visualization, kundalini yoga chanting, or certain breathing while holding certain poses. She said, mostly focused on either clear your mind, focus on one thing intently without wavering, be guided to explore or discover hidden truths about yourself. Be guided to create dreams by visualizing. She said all of this was for the purpose of healing, relaxing, strengthening the mind, creating, and also for eliminating stress. So these are all the selling points. You want to eliminate stress? Come and do this, this, and this. Learn this technique. You want to strengthen your mind? Practice these things. You want to create? You want to create your own dreams? Come here and, and you know, they'll teach you this thing. There. See? See how they get you interested? People are interested in the supernatural. That's just a fact. And the sad thing is most people are uh, deceived over into the satanic side of the supernatural. They're not coming and waiting on God and being empowered by the Holy Spirit to do things that bring him glory, okay? So all of these things are very appealing, and people are getting involved in all of these things, okay? So she said that's what the purpose of all of this was. That's what her belief was, is it's going to help her, right, to do all of this stuff. And that's a lot of you guys. That's a, this is, there's a lot of people in New Age. There, there are people that are professing to be Christians that are into it heavily. Okay, and God's been showing me as this teaching series has gone on that those uh, televangelists, you know, they're witches, they're Freemasons. They're New Age practitioners. They're teaching New Age. But they're calling it Christianity. Haven't we learned about this double mocking label that they're putting on stuff right where they're just calling they can they can stand up there and easily say jesus christ and know that they're talking about satan that's what they're doing so anyway um so i want you guys to hear some of what she shared in her testimony about these things let's hear it in her own words okay um she came to the church she came physically here to the church she's from florida key west and she came here to the church and so I want you to hear what she shared about the New Age and some of her meditation energy practices. Listen to this. I, within this, I think it's really important to say that I was always searching for God. 
And somewhere along the way, I, was, I allowed the word God to come back into my vocabulary. I think I wasn't so angry at the church that kicked us out, and I wasn't so angry at being abandoned by God and Jesus that I just felt like, okay, God's a word that works, even though for me it meant things like the universe, the divine, the creator, source, um, and a lot of those terms then led me to what is often referred to as a new thought movement. So my entry to that was in the science of mind, and I participated, I was on the board, I was uh, called the platform goddess because I helped give the announcements and, and handle things in the church um, on rotating Sunday mornings. Uh, I did several years of studies to become what they call a practitioner. So um, I did practitioner studies. I didn't fulfill the full commitment, so I never was actually certified as a practitioner, but let me tell you, I can pray. And I taught that kind of prayer for many years. Um, so when I went into the new thought, into the science of mind, I also did um, an additional training. I went to Europe and, and did some trainings in consciousness that gave me this experience of not just a new thought, they talk about being one with God, and I'll get into more of that in a little bit. When I went and did these other consciousness trainings, the position there was that there, I guess really there isn't a God, um, that we really are the consciousness of God, so we would do energy work. It was all about energy. I used to call it navigating the invisible side of the visible world, and it worked a lot with sensing potential. Um, one thing that I realized, and it, it's just started dawning on me recently how, like, what it means, but I can remember going into these, I called them like a pool of potential, and to me it felt like liquid black velvet. And that liquid black velvet, I called the creative cosmic goo. I would just give it these names, and it's like I could just reach in and grab up a handful and create, even to the sense of feeling like I may have been creating other universes or, or something out there. Um, just this, this creative energy expansiveness that was very powerful, um, very... I'm going to say also very seductive. I wouldn't have used that term before, but right here I can see that because it just, the way that it felt. Um, in my drug use time, one drug I really liked to use was ecstasy. And, and it, one of the experiences is like, you are high. And my friends and I would joke around that I'm kissing light bulbs as its expression of how high we were. And I remember using that, thinking I would love to feel like this every day, because it just felt so loving. And to me, this conscious energy experience felt that same way. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is like doing X, this is great. So I sort of was still on this high, although it felt natural, um, I learned so much more about that. So I did this, this consciousness work, and then uh, I, I traveled around for um, another incident where Jesus really came to me was uh, in this work I was doing to clear out trauma from my nervous system. And... Um, which I, I'll just even speak to, I did so many things, all kinds of um, like past life regressions and all kinds of energy work. I, I think it's going to be so many things that people watching this may know about. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I probably did it. And, um, and so this was uh, an activity where there was some guided visualization. It just took me into a door. So in my mind, um, I was going to shut the door on suicide so that that could never plague me again, and uh, which is something that had plagued me. Death plagued me. There were many times that I prayed for death throughout my life, and there was one time where I was 
at the edge of attempting suicide and a friend called and that just made the difference where I put the bottle down. And um, so this, in this incident, um, in my mind, I saw that I was on this side of the door just with all of my might holding it. My foot was against the door frame and it's like I could see to the other side of the door and there was a demon over there with the same amount of might trying to pull the door open and had his foot against the both feet of his, you know, trying to pull it open. And the moment that I saw it, this light, something just came in me and that thing was gone. And I remember thinking, Christ, at the time I said Christ consciousness because that was my belief. But what I know now is that that was actually Jesus like once more coming to my psychic spiritual rescue um, and I still didn't pursue him at that time. Okay. I included what she shared about guided visualization um, because that can be a type of meditation or it usually goes hand in hand with it. There are a lot of things mixed in with different types of meditation and a lot of these new age practices uh, more than one thing is involved when you're actually doing part of something or something else okay um, like the yoga where you have the poses you have what's called mudras the things that they're doing with their hands and you have the breathing you have the chanting I mean there's a lot packed into that okay so I went ahead and included that here what she shared and I pulled this from offline Guided visualization is a meditation or mindfulness technique where a person uses their senses and imagination to help them connect with something in their mind. This can include a feeling such as self-confidence or calmness, a place, an action, or a goal. She was trying to heal from that trauma, the suicide that she, you know, was always plaguing her. Now, look at this. In guided meditation, our practice is shaped by another person's voice. That's what it means, guided. Someone else is telling you uh, things to, you know, think about, to focus on, to, you know, someone else is guiding it, okay? Because the mind has a tendency to wander where it will, many of us find it easier to focus and relax our minds uh, when our minds aren't entirely left to their own devices. This form of meditation is often led by a real live guide in group settings or by recordings presented on apps, podcasts, videos, CDs, etc. Um, that's what I had to add about where she was doing the, the guided visualization. So, okay, I want to tell you guys, the internet... And the market in general, like where you can go to these new age shops and places and, like I said, classes and uh, training and all of it, the, it, you know, this stuff, it's, it's flooded. The market is flooded with this stuff. It is just everywhere. It is everywhere, okay? And there's just volumes of it online. In my research, there's just volumes and volumes of this stuff, okay? So many people, like I said, even Christians are involved in some sort of meditation. They're, everybody's looking for peace. Everybody's looking for a way to de-stress and calm down and all of these things. And they're looking in the wrong places. It's found in Jesus and Jesus alone. And I'm going to get to all of that. Um, I'm, you know, saving the biblical part of all of that. I am going to get to that, okay? So there are so many different types of meditation out there. And they can blend together and they can mix in in other things as well, other pieces and parts of the New Age. But I'm not focusing on trying to cover each and every type of meditation. You know, that I would just never get off of it if that's what I was trying to do, okay? I'm trying to bring it out enough that you can see what it is. When I cover the biblical meditation, you're going to see that none of this that we've been talking about is biblical or godly. It doesn't lead to Jesus at all. None of it. Okay, so that's what I want you to understand about all this meditation that the world is pushing, even doctors and therapists and all of that. They're not coming from biblical standpoint. They're not coming from Jesus Christ 
and, and given that kind of counsel, right? So all of the meditation that I've looked at and researched and learned about, it's not going to lead you to Jesus, okay? It's not going to give you real and lasting, true peace and comfort or any of those things, okay? Now, um, and like I said, I'm not trying to cover every single type of meditation. I think when I did a couple of searches, I came up with at least 39 different types, right? Okay, the main thing that I want you to know is they are not of God. They do not lead to Jesus Christ, and they're not biblical, okay? When I finish all of this about the New Age meditation, then I am going to teach and bring out and help you to understand what biblical meditation is, okay? So um, let's talk about some of what Simone shared. The ecstasy that sh she was doing, that was another door that she was opening in her life, that she was opening that door to the demonic, okay? Even though she didn't, you know, necessarily know all of that and her friends, you know, and that kind of thing. But that allows the fallen angels to come in and interact with her and to influence her away from Jesus, okay? That's just another layer in all of this. And I will tell you guys, everybody who's listening to this right now, all of the hallucinogenic, and I call them also psychedelic type of drugs, LSD, um, and like she was saying, ecstasy, there's, there's different ones. Um, those kind of drugs, they will open you up, your mind, your life to the demonic. That's what they do, okay? The trauma clearing and the shutting the door on suicide work that Simone was led into, that was never going to work. It was never going to work, okay? Um, nothing like that is really going to work that's not of Jesus Christ, okay? If you're not firmly and fully in his hands, remember the Bible says to submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. If you're doing these different types of drugs and this medita you know, meditation, witchcraft, and all, all these things that Simone was involved in, she wasn't ever going to be able to shut that door to suicide because that's coming from the demonic realm, right? So it wasn't ever going to work. And sometimes people might feel a sense of relief or a moment of victory or whatever. It's going to come right back around, okay? Um, she is yet another powerful witness to all of us uh, about the demonic surfacing in her life. Do you see that? She was trying to do this work that was trying to, you know, uh, clear out the trauma, shutting the door on suicide, and look what was manifesting. She was seeing in her, you know, uh, visualization there, in her guided visualization, a demon. She's trying to shut that door and he's trying to keep it open. You see that? Okay. Um, so a demon surfaced there. And I can tell you what that's all about is Satan did not want her to get free from those suicidal thoughts. Remember, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so how does he kill? If he can get you to kill yourself, then that's a victory for him. Because Jesus didn't create any of us to take our own lives. He said he'd be with us even to the end of the age. He said, fear not, for I am with you. He's the one who upholds us, strengthens us, empowers us, and we're here to bring him glory. And nobody created to take their own life, okay? That's a sin against God who created them. Okay. So uh, the fallen angels, they will work to deceive you for a while. Remember how she said all of this felt good and all of this, you know, right? So they were working to deceive her. They wanted her to stay on that hook, stay involved, stay in, you know, Satan's grasp in his clutches, okay? But ultimately, like I said, they're going to swing it right back around. Their ultimate glow is to tear you down and destroy. Simone used the words powerful and seductive for the experiences she was having when she was doing the energy work. And remember, Elvis said about the meditation that he was doing, he was doing meditation before every concert and also other times in his life, he said that it was better than any drug he knew. Wally Larson, he said the whole experience of being high naturally, it was very experiential and very pleasant. It got him in hook, line, and sinker. 
And he said he thought it was the greatest. I want to tell you something. People like Simone, they're not doing this because they're not getting a payoff. They are. Satan is delivering. The fallen angels are delivering. Okay? They're not just entering right in and they're getting, you know, a painful experience that's making them run for the hills. Right? You, you're hearing them say how good it feels, how powerful, how seductive, how wonderful. Okay? Um, time and time again, I'm hearing testimonies of these great feelings, these awesome, powerful experiences that people are having. And you have to remember, Satan counterfeits everything that God does. You think about the Holy Spirit. Think about when the Holy Spirit is moving through you to touch someone, to do, you know, what God's calling you to do. And you think about that kind of power. And Satan has his knockoff power. And he has given them these experiences and things to try to keep them in his clutches. Okay? Um, Satan and the fallen angels, they are causing them to have these amazing feelings and experiences. They are using their lying signs and wonders. And remember, they can give false healings and miracles and powerful experiences and sensations to deceive you and keep you high on those emotions and those feelings and those power trips because it feels good. And, and they can dish that out if that's what it takes to reel someone in and keep them away from Jesus. They'll do that. They'll do that. And even though Simone was having those exhilarating experiences, she, was, she also wanted to commit suicide. We had that same witness from Elvis who wanted to commit suicide. Yet they were having these exhilarating, powerful experiences and felt so good. And all. You see? You see the underbelly of what really was going on there? Um, ultimately, all the New Age practices... We're not bringing her real and true lasting peace and happiness. It was like moments of being high, but then there were those low valleys, okay, that she was having to navigate and deal with. Um, you look at the end of Elvis's life, and you can see what the end game is for staying in the New Age movement. There may be those wonderful moments, but the end, the end of his whole life, and the end of those who stay in new age that don't get out is misery and damnation. The wages of sin is death. I asked Simone about the liquid black velvet that she was describing. And this is what she shared. Uh, this is in addition to her video testimony. She said, I experienced it in heightened energy states of awareness. So this would be meditation to get to that place, okay, that were first accessed by a form of fluid-guided meditation in that I wasn't specifically guided but invited into different levels and states of energetic awareness. I could sense and see with my mind this like pool of liquid black velvet. It was shiny and silky soft yet had substance, not just runny. And it was like I was standing perpendicular to it, yet I was like at one with it. So I could sense movement and potentials of energy rising like a pot of water set to boil when a big bubble rolls up, but doesn't break the surface yet. And I'd know which one was the potential wanting to be made manifest. So I'd call it forth and partner with it to give it access to physical life. Other times, I'd skim my hand over it and call it up. Others, I'd plunge my hand in and pull out a handful of this creative cosmic goo and flip it or flick it into creation to manifest in the physical world. She felt like she was creating other universes. And that must have been a powerful feeling. And yet it wasn't real. You know, that wasn't real. Just because you felt that power and you were in this amazing type of experience doesn't mean you were actually creating these other universes, right? She knows that now. 
right? But that's how it felt, and that's what was going on at that time in her life when she was in all of that, okay? This is what the demonic produced. This is what they can do with their power, okay? Those lying signs and wonders. Satan is crafty. He studies those that come his way, and he sees what can he use to seduce them, you know, what button can I push? What thing can I dangle in front of them to reel them in closer to me? What will attract and entice them to come his way? He studies. He studies us. He tries to push our buttons. He's always trying to pull us away from Jesus, even the ones who are in Christ. He never lets up, okay? Now, I want you guys, uh, we're going to listen to another part of Simone's testimony. She was invited onto the 700 Club to share her testimony. And she told me that even though they are Freemasons, they're witches, she knows this. I have spoken about this kind of thing many times. But she said that maybe her testimony could still get out to help others. And that's true. God can use it for his glory, even if those that produce that show are serving Satan. So let's hear what she shared on the 700 Club about the light that New Agers are working to achieve and about their beliefs in reincarnation. Listen to this, you guys. Adding to the delusion, some taught that one could become like Jesus, a teacher who had attained the ultimate enlightenment, becoming a god through reincarnation and obtaining more light. Eventually, when I keep coming back, I would have that much light. And then when you became completely light, you became the light that came back and fed the other souls working their way up the reincarnation, getting reborn ladder. Still, no matter how high she climbed or enlightened she became, there was an emptiness she couldn't shake. There were so many things about the spiritual path that I loved and that made me feel happy. My life was a contradiction and that I also was in the, the deepest, darkest pit. This is the beautiful deception. Okay, when the New Agers are talking about light and they say light and love and all of this all the time, remember the Word of God tells us we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, but the Word of God also tells us He is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is, not Lucifer, the light bringer or the light bearer. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Okay, so Satan tries to mock that and he's a knock, trying to knock, knock off and copycat that, right? So when Simone was talking about this light, right? Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's the one who everybody needs to come to. It's not people, like she was describing this process of reincarnation and evolving and coming back and then till you reach this high, you know, where you're just the pure light. Jesus is that pure light that, that's really the truth. He's the true light, okay? What they are being taught in New Age is a false light, okay? It's really about Satan. But um, so what she's talking about there reincarnation is not biblical and I've talked about that in this series already but that's coming from Hinduism okay uh, we know I mean we're not looping back through and looping back through we got it wrong and now we're gonna come back again and see if we can get some more things right and we're gonna come back again and we're gonna keep going until we get it right or we get perfected that's not that's not biblical right so we know the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment and as Christians, we know we get one shot at it. You get one shot at it. Right now, at, you get one shot at eternal blessing and happiness in heaven. And that's the life that we're living right now. Right now. This is our chance to choose our master. Who are we going to serve and get busy serving him? Once we die, the decision is set. You made your decision. You showed Jesus whether you loved him and you were seeking after righteousness and hungering and thirsting after righteousness or not. You showed him by the life that you lived. We don't get any second chances. 
Once you die, it's final. You made your decision, okay? While we are alive, God is merciful and he gives us many chances to come to him and get our lives right with him. I mean, just listening to Simone's testimony that she gave here at the church, I could count at least five times, at least five, that uh, Jesus plainly came to her. And I know there were more than just that because she just gave her testimony off the cuff. And even when she left, she was like, there's more things, you know, I forgot. You know, we always remember more things later, right? So, but at least five times in Simone's life, okay? But once we die, that's final. We made our decision. We made our choice. We served our master, whichever one it was, Jesus Christ or Satan. And... um in the New Age, they teach and believe that Jesus was one of the ascended masters. Those are fallen angels, okay? But they called them ascended masters, that they were the ones who have all the ancient knowledge and wisdom and all of this as fallen angels, okay? Um, so they teach that you can do enough energy work, and that's through meditation and all these different practices, obtain enough light to be like Jesus, and now, let's look at Scripture, because those in the New Age movement, they're being told the same old lie that Satan tempted Eve with. It's the same lie. He's not original. He's not creative. He's not, he's not coming up with any new material. Let's go to Genesis 3, 1 through 5. He is still telling the same lie today. Listen to this. Now, the serpent was more subtle, that means sneaky, crafty, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, or that is, did God really say, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods. And that is, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, look at Satan. He immediately came and challenged God's word. Immediately, he went after God's word. She told him plainly what God said, but because his goal was to cause her to disobey, and that's all it took. Some people say, surely it wasn't about eating a piece of fruit. It was about disobedience. God said no, and she went against what he told her. So his goal was to get her to disobey. He immediately contradicted God's word by telling her, you won't die. And... Then he goes further and he says, not only will you not die, he's like, if you do it, you'll be like God. And so the gist of that is, and he doesn't want you to be like him. That's all it took. That's all it took for her to believe that she's not going to really die like God said. And that she was going to have all this power, knowing good and evil, she was going to be like God. Right? If you're going to be like God, then that means power comes along with that. And Satan is still telling that lie today. You want to be like God? Come over here. You can ascend. You can be the light. You can get it right. And then you can feed others. Others can feed off of the light that you perfect and bring to them. You can be like God. See, that's what Simone was just sharing with us. They believe that they can be like Jesus. They're that... You know, that lie is still being told in the New Age. That he was just an ascended master. He had, you know, all the things that he did that they could raise their energy and do all their energy and their conscious work and all of their meditation and all of the things that they do and that they could also become just like Jesus and do all, all the stuff that he did. And I'm sure they use that scripture where he says, greater works than these will you do. And, you know, Jesus wasn't saying that we were going to do something more miraculous than he himself did or could do. But to me, it means greater in number 
It's a longer span of time. There's more of us doing these works all around the earth instead of just all the crowd was trying to get to Jesus at that time, right? Once the Holy Spirit went out and you serve the Lord, then where his servants are all over the earth, you know, healing can be done, miracles, if that's what's called for, these works can be done in a greater number, right? It's okay. Um, so he came against God. I mean, that, that's his, you know, that's his rival, right? And God's the very one who created him. Jesus created him. Um, so we see him using the same bait today. And he's saying, come and do this or that and ascend or raise your consciousness and you can be like God. But at the same time, did you hear Simone say how miserable she was? She said there were so many things about the spiritual path that she loved and that made her feel happy, but she says her life was a contradiction and that she also was in the deepest, darkest pit. Now, that's her being candid. A lot of the people, I'm sure if you're rubbing elbows with the people in the New Age, especially those teaching and stuff, they're not, they're not going to share those things. They're going to act like they're up on the mountaintop and everything's great and wonderful and all of this, but they're not really sharing the truth of what's going on behind the scenes when they're alone at home, you know, and, and the things that they're wrestling with and what's really the truth of their lives, you know. I praise God that uh, she shared that with us and she was saying that's the beautiful deception because on the one hand, it was so mesmerizing and felt so wonderful and it was like a natural high, like Wally said, and was so great, like Elvis said, the, better than any drug he knew. But yet on the other side, there was suicide. There was a deep, dark pit. There was, it wasn't all of that, right? It wasn't solid and continual and staying that way, right? So that's fruit. That's bad fruit, you guys. So Satan is still challenging God's word today. And I, I will tell you, get in God's word. You got to get his word down inside you so that when Satan comes around trying to lie to you, you can see through the lies. You've got to feed your spirit man on God's word. Okay? Now, this is Simone at the church with us in January of 2018. She was saved shortly becoming, before coming to the church. When she came, I administered deliverance, and she had actually already left the church when I thought to invite her to share her testimony. She traveled back to the church, and we recorded her testimony, and then we baptized her that night. It was January. It was already dark outside, and I'm going to say what a trooper she was because it was cold out there, cold and dark, and we still baptized her. I praise the Lord for that. And I want you to take a look at her. Look how she's glowing here. You know, uh, I praise the Lord for his persistence. And Jesus came to Simone so many times in her life. That was the Father drawing her to himself. And I'm so happy that she finally responded. If you listen to her full testimony, she'll say so many times Jesus plainly showed up and she knew it was him and she didn't respond. But I praise God, he didn't give up, he kept on, and she finally did respond and come to him. And if you would like to hear her full testimony that she gave here at the church and the testimony she gave at the 700 Club, both links are in my sermon notes. If you go on to threeheartschurch.org, go over to the sermons tab and look up today's sermon, you will see the links there on my notes, or wherever you're watching this from, look in the info box, and, and those links will be there, okay? In closing, Simone said, It is so easy to be deceived from Christ while feeling like such a good, loving, heart-centered person. A good, loving, heart-centered person. And she said, but the whole, the whole time you're feeling that way, you're being deceived away from Christ. And it's, it's hard to, you know, and, and, and it's interesting because some of the people that have come here that have been in New Age and they're, they're saying they're Christians... And I would be like, well, something's off. You're not getting it. Something ain't right. That's, that's what it is. You know, and like she's saying, you know, good, loving, heart-centered person, but the whole while being deceived away from Christ. 
Satan wants you to believe that if you're nice and loving, that only good things await you and that you'll automatically go to heaven or you'll ascend into the light as the New Agers are taught. That is a great lie. That's the old just being a good person is going to get it done lie, okay? Not one person ever lived a sinless life. God created everything, and he is the one who defines what sin is and how we should live. The first man and the first woman, Adam and Eve, sinned against God, so God pronounced a curse against this earth and against the man and against the woman. And we are now in, we live in a fallen world. Because of their sin, everyone is born into sin. Every person on this earth needs a Savior. Every single one of us. They need to hear the gospel message of what Christ has done for them. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the only way to God and to eternal life. The Bible tells us that we can't just be good people and expect to get to heaven that way. Because we're deceiving ourselves. If we believe our own righteousness is good enough, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. It's just a filthy rag. Get it out of here. We need Jesus. He's the only way to the Father. He's the only way to an eternal life of peace. Blessing, happiness. It's Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, not the fake one. And real salvation, not the false salvation that many people have been deceived and are actually under. Okay? So um, next week I am going to be talking about meditation again. Still some more things that I want to cover. I want to get it covered thoroughly then I'm going to teach biblical meditation, and then we're going to move on from there, okay? So let's go to prayer, you guys. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that you never gave up on Simone. You never give up on pursuing, pursuing the lost. You're looking for those lost sheep. You're always searching for the ones who are lost and trying to bring them into your fold, into your flock. And Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You are the head of the body, the head of the church. I praise you, dear Lord Jesus. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. I praise God for everyone who's come to you and received you as their Savior, Lord and King receive the blood you shed for them and the life you gave for them. God the Father has placed those who've done so in your righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for holding us there. The Word of God says you won't lose any whom the Father has given you. And dear Heavenly Father, I praise you, Father. You are the Lord God Almighty, and you are holy, holy, holy holy you are sovereign heavenly father you reign over all and i magnify you heavenly father i love you father you are long suffering heavenly father not willing for any to perish but for all to come to repentance and to have everlasting life and i pray heavenly father for those that i pray for and lift up in prayer week after week and those that you draw to this ministry, Heavenly Father, those listening now, I pray, Heavenly Father, for their salvation. Lord, I want to lift up Jeff to you. I lift up Matthew to you, Johan. I lift up Michaela. I lift up Sister Kimberly's parents, Jessica's parents and their spouses and her siblings. I lift up our family and friends, Heavenly Father. I lift those up to you, Lord, who are still redeemable in this world. I pray, Father, that you will soften their hearts and uh, open their blinded eyes, Father. I pray that you will turn their hearts to you. I pray that you would draw them to the foot of the cross, that they would come to Jesus, that they would have a hunger and desire to know Jesus, the real Jesus, and to have real salvation, not to be playing church, not to be playing games, 
Not to be playing like they're saved and there's no godly fruit in their lives. They don't ever talk about you or your word or, or what you're doing in their lives. I'm talking about real salvation. And that's what we're praying for. That's what I'm praying for, Heavenly Father. I pray that you would draw them by your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that you would open their spiritual eyes and ears and understanding. And I pray that they would come and they would seek Jesus and they would, they would be sorry for their sins, torn up over their sins, and that they would ask forgiveness for their sins and call their sins out before you, Heavenly Father, that they would ask forgiveness and ask Jesus to please forgive them and to please be the Lord and Savior of their lives. I pray for their salvation, Lord. I lift lift jeff up to you father please soften his heart and turn him back to you lord pray for salvation for our family and friends heavenly father we want to see them in heaven with us one day and heavenly father i want to pray for the targeted individuals i want to pray for those who've been through mk ultra those who are being targeted through directed energy weapons through frequencies I pray for uh, all of these things to be stopped against your children, Father. I pray a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around them, Heavenly Father. I pray for deliverance from the frequencies that are being used against your children and against your church in a harmful way. I pray, Father, uh, for the gang stalking to be stopped. I pray, Lord, that they would not be isolated. I pray, Father, that you would bring Christian friends into their lives, Lord. I pray for their bodies to be healed. I pray for them to be delivered from the things that are tormenting their lives, Heavenly Father. I pray that you would strengthen them, Lord. I pray that you would help them to press in and to begin to pray consistently and to read the Word of God daily so that they could grow their spirit man strong, that they could stand up spiritually and stand against these things in their lives and see you go to work on their behalves and see a difference in their lives, Heavenly Father. I pray for them to be set free from this, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, this surveillance system that's set out all around this world where Satan watches us and listens to us through all of our smartphones and smart technology, through TVs and in every store and every street light and, or stoplight where they're recording everything and watching everything we do. I pray, Heavenly Father, that he would not be able to receive our thoughts or send thoughts to us. I pray that you cut him off from your children. I pray, Heavenly Father, that... Um, he wouldn't be able to know what we're talking about, what we're thinking. I pray that his system where it's running on our DNA through our bone marrow, I pray that it would fail, that it would come to nothing, that it would come to ruin, Heavenly Father. Please keep us protected, Heavenly Father. And I pray for your children to be delivered from the, from the targeting system that's over this whole world. Most people are targeted in some way, even if they don't know about it. Please protect and deliver us from that system, Heavenly Father. I pray that you would restore our bodies. I pray that you would heal our DNA and restore our DNA from all the harmful things that we've been duped into taking into our bodies. And I pray, Heavenly Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over those that are listening to this message right now. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over Three Hearts Church Congregation. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will bless them. Please bless the cheerful givers abundantly. Please bless those that are praying sincere prayers, Heavenly Father. I pray, Father, that you would, you're the potter and we're the clay. I pray that you would mold us and shape us, Heavenly Father. I pray that we would be more like Jesus Christ. We can never be Jesus. We can never be God. But, Lord, I pray that you would help us to be more like him when he walked this earth in the flesh. Help us, Lord, to overcome the flesh and to walk in the spirit, to walk in, by faith and to walk in the spirit, Heavenly Father. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by your spirit, says the Lord. Help us to be sensitive to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, Father. I pray for more of the fruit of the spirit to be poured out in our lives and to grow. And I pray that we would, each one of us, would live very fruitful lives in Christ. And, and that we would do powerful things, Father, for your glory, honor, and kingdom. 
Please help us to test the spirits, Father, to know what spirit something is being done by, someone is speaking by, something is being, um, some action was done by. Help us to test the spirits, Father, and to remember that Satan can do lying signs and wonders, not to believe everything we hear or everything that we see. Help us, Heavenly Father, to endure and keep the faith. Please empower us, Father, and help us to hang on. Please meet our needs, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this great and powerful ministry, Father. I thank you for sending it all around this world. And I give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what you're doing in and through this ministry. It's your ministry, Father. And I love you and I magnify you, Heavenly Father. And I pray all of these things in the precious and holy and mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Hey, you guys. I just want to take a minute to um, let's go through how to pray the prayer of salvation, okay? And why? Why do we even need to pray the prayer of salvation, okay? And also, I'm talking to the people also who maybe walked with the Lord and you went away from him and you just kind of left it behind and you haven't really been walking with Jesus anymore. Um, though that's what we call backsliders. I'm talking to both the person who wants to be saved for the first time ever and to the person who's a backslider who wants to come back to Jesus because this ministry does not believe in once saved, always saved. Okay, God does his part and we do our part. It's a team, we work together. All right, so the first thing is you might say, and I hear this a lot, and even my husband was saying it, to be honest with you, before we got truly saved. I'm a good person. You know, I haven't killed anybody. That's kind of the standard these days. As long as you haven't killed anybody, you're a good person. Really, listen to this. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3.23. All of us have sinned. To be honest with you, because the world is in a fallen state, we all are born into sin, okay? And also for the people that think, but I'm a good person. I'm good. I haven't hurt. I don't hurt nobody. I do good things. I help people. That, that person, then uh, there's scripture in Isaiah that says for our righteousness, that's when we're calling ourselves good and we're saying, but we're good. We're good people. Our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. That's that thing that stinks that you're like, ooh, get it out of the house, right? Filthy rags to him. Okay, and he's the standard. He's the judge, Jesus Christ. And so the thing is, if we don't, if we miss his mark and we don't please him, we're not going to make heaven. So we want to make sure we got our ducks all in a row, right? And uh, if you look at the Ten Commandments, now we're not a legalistic church. We know we're under grace, which is what Jesus Christ brought. But there's people that say, you know, like I don't need Jesus. I'm I'm doing the Ten Commandments. Well, if you just pull out the simplest one, I'm just going to pull out one. You shall not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, okay? That's what lying is. And if you say, I, oh, I don't lie, that's a lie. Everybody lies. Little kids come out lying. You say, did you do that? Did you break this? No, not me. Bam. So come on, you know. Um, so here's the thing. We've all broken uh, at least one of the commandments. And in the New Testament, it says if you break one, you broke them all. Because that's the attitude of God. He's like, if you break one, it's just as good as breaking them all because that's all it takes to separate you from him as one. Okay? So let's pray that prayer of salvation. It's real easy to do, y'all. You just say, Dear Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Please come into my heart. I believe you died on that cross for me, and I believe you rose again, and you are seated at God's right hand. Please help me to live for you all the days of my life. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, that prayer, you prayed to Jesus in his name. The rest of them, you're going to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Okay? And you'll get all that as you learn and grow in the Spirit. Okay? Um, to see why you needed to pray that prayer of salvation, the scripture on that is Romans 10, 9 and 10. That'll show you about confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart and, and how to obtain salvation in case you're wondering how come we're doing that, okay? Um, 
Now, something that you're going to want to do, you want to right off the bat start establishing your relationship with Jesus, okay? And in order to do that, you want to hear his voice, right? You want to hear him. I don't know a person out there that's trying to be a Christian that doesn't want to hear his voice. And how you hear his voice? Read his word. That's his words written down for you and I to read. That's his voice speaking to you without a shadow of a doubt, okay? Then when you pray, you speak to him. So what's that? That's two-way communication. You're speaking to him. He's speaking to you. Now you've got a relationship going, okay? And you want to do that every day. Every day, seek him. You seek him by reading his word and praying and letting him know, I want more of you. When you read the Bible, ask him to open your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears and to give you understanding. And he'll help you understand his word, okay? He wrote it by Holy Spirit, okay? And the next thing that you're going to want to do is get in a good Bible-based church. Now, I'm not pushing any kind of denomination. You just want to find a church that is preaching and teaching the whole Bible, okay? They believe in the Bible, and they believe in Jesus Christ, that he is God and the Son of God, okay? And that it's through him that we have our redemption and our salvation. He's the way, the truth, and the life, okay? And also, um, I wanted to say that some people think, oh, I just pray for forgiveness one time and I'm done because he died way back when. So now that I asked, it's all already done. No, you need to ask forgiveness and try to make it a habit on a daily basis because we're in these fleshly bodies before we get our glorified bodies. So we battle this flesh daily. So just, you know, when you pray each day at some point during the day, say, Lord, please forgive me for all my sins and go on about your prayer. And he knows you're praying and you're talking to him from your heart. And you talk to him just like you and I would talk, okay? You don't have to have fancy whatever, all right? And ask him to help you grow spiritually. If you want to, let us know that you prayed that prayer. It would be such a blessing to hear your testimony, okay? God bless y'all.